Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel where we talk about data visualizations in Python. In a previous video, I introduced you to the basics of Seaborn color palettes. So in this video, I want to show you some more advanced options. Specifically, I'll show you how to create your own color palettes using Seaborn's other palette options, starting with QPelix. We'll also take a look at the widget to create your own color palettes. All of the code I demo today is available on my GitHub page. So let's get started with the Seaborn Python code. So let's start off by talking about the Cube Helix palette. Now, the Cube Helix system was created by Dave Green, and it's named because its colors trace out a helix pattern through the RGB color cube, ranging from black to white. Now, the nice thing about this system is that palettes can be created with linearly increasing or decreasing brightness. That means that information can be preserved on both black and white printers, as well as for individuals experiencing colorblindness. So to access QPelix in Seaborn, we just need to reference the Seaborn library, and here I've imported that and aliased it as SNS. Then we'll call up Cube Helix Palette. That brings up these nice shades of pinks and purples, but you have a lot more options here as well. Taking a look at the documentation, we see that we have several different arguments we can use. So let's take a look at a couple of those. So start references, what color will actually start from? The default is zero, but we can switch this to another number like one to see these nice green shades. We also have these other arguments, for example, rote, which stands for rotation, will tell us how far we're going to rotate through that helix pattern. So the default here is 0.4, but we can change that if we'd like. So for example, here's two where we're doing two full rotations, or we could decrease that down to 0.2. So we're only rotating a small amount through that helix. Let's finally switch this to one so that we're doing one full rotation. The arguments light and dark will specify how light that lightest shade should be, and of course, how dark the darkest shade should be. And like with other Seaborn palettes, you can also specify if you'd like additional or fewer colors in this palette. Now, another thing that you might see is someone using a shorthand string and passing that through to the Seaborn color palette. So you can actually represent the cube helix within the color palette as well. That starts with CH for cube helix, and then we'll pass in the various parameters through a shorthand string. So for example, if I say one, that's using a starting value of one. We could also specify that R, the rotation is one, that L, the lightness will be 0.75, or that D, the darkness will be 0.4. And once again, we can specify that we want 10 colors here by passing in 10 as the argument. So sometimes you'll see this shorthand string in Seaborn, and if it starts with CH, we are referencing the cube helix palette. Our next color palette is called the HUSL palette. So the HUSL color system has now been renamed HSL UV, but it's a human friendly version of the HSL color system. So HSL is another popular color model that breaks down colors into three different arguments, H for hue, S for saturation, and L for lightness. You can pull up the HUSL palette in Seaborn and you'll see these nice bright colors. But once again, we have various arguments here. H represents the starting hue of this palette. S represents the saturation of this palette. So a smaller value for S will be grayer. And finally, we have L for lightness. If we increase that to something like 0.9, we'll see a lighter palette. And if we decrease that, we will see a darker palette. Our next type of palette is called the XKCD palette. So these colors are based off of the results of the XKCD color survey. So XKCD is the comic series, and a few years back they put together a color survey. They received feedback from over 200,000 different user sessions, and throughout those 200,000 sessions, 5 million colors were named. Then they went through and aggregated the most commonly named colors. In the end, there's a full table of available XKCD color names, and there's approximately a thousand different colors you have access to here. So you can use the XKCD color names within this XKCD palette. So this works by passing in a list of colors that you'd like to use in your palette. So for example, there's one color called neon pink. You could use that in your palette by referencing its name. And you could go on to reference whatever colors you like, and all of these color names are coming from the results of that survey. 
However many color names you pass in, that's how many colors will be in your Seaborn palette. Similar to the XKCD palette, Seaborn also has something called the Crayon palette. And now we're going to pass in the standard names of Crayola crayons. So reference the Seaborn library and the Crayon palette. And then you'll just be passing in a list of whatever Crayola crayon names you enjoy. You can see the Wikipedia page for all of the different standard names that are available. And finally, you can also pass in names of colors to the standard Seaborn color palette, just like we've been doing so far. But now when you pass in a list of colors, you can either reference the matplotlib color names, or you can reference hexadecimal colors. So hexadecimal HTML color codes specify the RGB components with two characters each. To reference a color code, just use the hashtag and then the color code name. For example, 33AAFF. So this is another really nice way if you have really specific colors that you'd like to include in your palette. So clearly you have a lot of different options to create your own color palette in Seaborn. But if you don't want to remember all of those different colors and options, you can use a widget to create your own color palette through drop downs and sliders. Here's an example of that in the code. There are a couple different color palette widgets in Seaborn. So let's start with this one. It's called Choose Color Brewer Palette. So this function requires an argument called data type. We need to provide what kind of palette we would like, either a sequential palette, a diverging one, or one that is qualitative. In this case, let's go with a diverging palette. So executing that, Seaborn brings up this little widget. So right now, we're dealing with a red-blue palette, but we have this option to click this dropdown and switch to whatever kind of palette we like. We can also specify how many colors we need in this palette, as well as the saturation value. By the way, Seaborn's using something called an iPie widget here. If you'd like to create your own iPie widgets, you can check out my past video called Introduction to iPie Widgets. If we actually want to use the color palette that we've created here, we need to save it. Let's go back up here and save this output as brew palette. Now you'll see that that has relaunched the widget, so we would actually need to recreate whatever kind of palette we'd like here. But now the output is saved in brew palette. So let's say that we wanted to use the palette that we just created with that widget. Here are some data about tips that I've loaded in from the Seaborn library. We're going to plot these data in a scatter plot, and we'll plot the total bill amount on the x-axis and the tip amount on the y-axis. We're also breaking out these data by day of the week, so Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday all have different colored dots. If we'd like to use that brew palette that we just created, we'll reference the palette argument and pass in brew palette. But we're going to get an error here. So scrolling down to the bottom of this error, Seaborn tells us that our palette list has the wrong number of colors. When you are creating these palettes with these widgets, you have to make sure you have the exact number of colors that you're going to need in your figure. So in this case, we only have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So let's set our n, the number of colors, to four. Now we can scroll back down to our plot and re-execute this. Now brew palette has four colors, so this works and we see those colors represented in our plot. Like I mentioned, Seaborn has several other palette widgets as well, so let's say that we wanted to choose a cube helix palette. We're saving this output as ch palette, and now you'll see that we have a widget with all of the different arguments that come from a cube helix palette. So we could, for example, change the rotation if we'd like, or the hue. We can specify the number of colors, and since we need four colors here, let's set that to four. We can now use our cube helix palette by passing it to this palette argument, and that output was saved as ch palette. So I hope you enjoyed learning all about the color palette options in Seaborn. Let me know in the comment section below which one of those options is your favorite. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time. Specifically, why does it specifically? Specific, gosh, that word's kind of hard. Specifically, specific, 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 specifically. <laughs> it's like when a word loses its meaning. Specifically.